What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colocraft Bushcraft. This is your first time here. My name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey uh, learning and developing bushcraft skills. So today uh, I'm out in the woods. This is a new patch of woods that I haven't been to before and essentially what I'm doing is a bit of a recon mission. Um, I really want to get out and do uh, another solo overnight wild camp but I want to uh, bring my hammock. So it's been a little while since I last used my DD hammock uh, and as the weather is starting to turn a bit colder I thought it would be a really cool opportunity to, uh, to get the hammock out and, uh, and spend the night in the woods. So basically all I'm doing today is wandering around this patch of woods here um, trying to find a nice open clear spot that uh, you know is away from all of the paths because this is a, a public place so there are footpaths around so I want to be away from the paths uh, in a nice clearing no deadfall above me but with uh, plenty of trees so I can string my hammock up in between. So all I'm going to be doing today is wandering around trying to find a spot if there is one. Uh, at some point, you know, I'll find a clearing and I'll, I'll sit down and I'll uh, relax for a little bit and have a coffee. Um, but until then, yeah, I'm just going to wander around, enjoy the scenery and uh, enjoy what is turning out to be a glorious day. So uh, come along with me and I hope you enjoy it. Well, this is pretty cool. Somebody's used a fallen tree to make their own shelter, which I would hazard a guess has not been slept in for quite a while. That's very, very cool. Something that I've wanted to do, actually myself for a little while, is get out into the woods and build a natural shelter. But as I said, for this one, we're just uh, scooting around the woods, trying to see if we can find an appropriate spot. This bit of woods, I have to say, is absolutely beautiful. So nice. Well, it's getting warm now, so. Oh, regret wearing trousers. All right, guys, I've been wandering around for sort of two and a half, three hours maybe, uh, and I haven't found anywhere that's quite right yet. I found plenty of places that I could string up a hammock. Um, and as I showed you, I found various um, sort of natural made shelters and stuff, so it's obvious that people do camp here. Um, but I haven't found anywhere particularly that, that is kind of suitable for me. Um, there's loads and loads of different footpaths in this particular bit of woods that all crisscross uh, amongst each other. So at the moment, I haven't really found anywhere that's kind of as isolated as I would want it to be for my, for my hammock. There's plenty of places to hang up a hammock, as I say, they're just quite, not quite right for me. So, um, so I'm a little bit thirsty now, so I found a nice clearing here, so I thought it would be about time just to uh, relax for a bit, set up my camp chair and, um, and make a coffee, so I'm going to do that now. I have noticed, actually, that there's a fair amount of rubbish around here. People are obviously dropping stuff as they've been camping. It looks fairly old, it all looks fairly sun bleached, but it's still here. So I think the right thing to do is pick it up and take it out with me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. But as I say, first of all, let's get a coffee going, shall we? It's 
kind of thing really annoys me. Like, how hard is it to take your rubbish home with you, really? I mean... I think... I don't even know what this is. Uh, some kind of... Yeah, fruit wrap thing. With some other weird... What I assume is like a soda bottle wrapper. And then just loads of tissue. Um, I just don't really understand why people throw this stuff away. I mean, it's so easy to put it in your bag. This stuff doesn't biodegrade, so why why would you come out here and just leave it? But and leave it for somebody else like me to come along and pick it up. But anyway, I've collected it all now. So this area, oh no, there's a bit more there. I've collected uh, as much as I can see, at least in this particular little clearing. So the first thing I'm going to do now is uh, sanitize my hands and sanitize my bag. Uh, and then get my coffee going. So, yeah. safer anyway. <clears throat> Seriously people, just, just take it home with you. Just take it home. Leave no trace. Camping chair, where are you? There we go. I decided that because I'm only out for the day, you know, not spending the night, that I could afford myself a little bit of luxury and bring my camping chair with me to relax. Really like this camping chair, folds up really small, really easily. And uh, so far hasn't broken. I have had one of these before that I took out on one trip to Dartmoor with some buddies of mine. The first time I sat on it, it just completely collapsed. <laughs> but so far, this one um, is doing pretty well. So I just got this one off the internet. It's not, it wasn't overly expensive. I think it was only about 13 pounds, maybe something like that, if that. Um, but yeah, does the job, does really well. I like it. Oh, and it's comfy as well. <clears throat> right. I keep saying it, but coffee. <clears throat> So for anyone that doesn't already know or is interested, today I've got my Hidden Woodsman Forest Ruck. Um, I love this pack, contains about 30 litres, and it's absolutely brilliant. Really well made from by called Malcolm in the USA, uh, and not drastically expensive. So if you're interested in getting a backpack, I can't I recommend these guys highly enough. Um, because it's only 30 litres, of course, you can't like live out of it. It's not like a real sort of backpacking across the country kind of uh, pack, but for an overnight or at least two nights, you can get everything you need in there. Sleeping bags and stuff like that. You can attach to the outside, to the bottom of it. Um, the straps go all the way around, which is really cool. And you can get additional straps to add on the bottom as well, which is uh, really cool. I like that a lot. Right, Billy can. Because of where I am, I'm not gonna make like a fire on the ground. Um, namely because I don't have the time to, uh, or the water resources around me to ensure that um, it's put out properly. Um, so I brought with me, same as in my last video, I brought with me my Biolite little twig stove, um, which is a really great bit of kit uh, and I like it a lot and works really, really well. So I'm going to use this. I'm just going to clear a patch on the ground um, and then I'll get this going. The ground underneath all of these twigs and stuff is actually quite damp, which is really good, just in case there are any random little sparks that come out. So I'm quite happy with that. I 
What's really cool about this um, is that it actually has a built-in fan, an electrical fan to it that's actually charged by the, the heat of the fire itself, uh, which is absolutely brilliant. It's got a USB port in it, so you can charge your phone and stuff it if it should run out off the actual uh, fire itself, which I, uh, I think is brilliant. Um, I've no idea uh, how much it costs or where it came from, because to be honest, I have uh, borrowed this <laughs> from a, a very good friend of mine. Uh, so I'm very, very grateful to him for letting me uh, essentially nick it. But I've used it quite a lot and I, and I really, really like it. It's really, really simple to use. All you need is some nice dry twigs and stuff that you can find on the floor. And as you can see, there's loads around me. So, uh, so let's, just, uh, let's stop talking, let's stop waffling about it and let's get this going and I'll show you how it works. So at the moment, as you can see, I'm harvesting the sticks from this uh, particular bit of wood that is on the floor. I'm trying to get the thinnest ones that I can at the moment, um, purely because to get the fire going, um, if the sticks are small and dry, they are more likely to, uh, to catch the flame, which is what I want to get it going. The fan and stuff inside the, inside the twig stuff does help, but this just makes it like, a little bit easier. So because my bushcraft skills are still in their infancy, um, to get this going I'm going to use some cotton wool and I'm going to put a load of uh, Vaseline into it because that helps it stay alight longer. It's a little bit messy, um, but it does work, and that's the important thing. I'm also, I could spark this using my fire steel, but for the sake of convenience, um, I'm just going to use a lighter so don't judge me too much whatever works you know okay so push that down into the bottom and then we'll get some sticks in so the thin sticks first get some of those in that appears to have gone out, which is upsetting. <laughs> All right, never mind, we'll try that again. It will work, I promise. There we go, now we've got a bit of flame. Get the uh, fan going. Circulate some air. We'll just get some really thin twigs in. Hopefully, hopefully this will now take. Once we've got a bit of fire going like that, we can start to add these bigger pieces, which hopefully will take a little bit longer to burn. So these, I'm literally just picking up off the floor around me adding in. So all I'm doing there, as you can probably hear, is I've turned the fan up a bit because it's now getting nice and hot. So there's more air circulating through it, so we get a hotter flame. Honestly, brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. Particularly good if, like me, you're only just starting out and you need <laughs> A little bit of help. Okay, let's get some water on. The only kind of slightly negative thing about this stove, it's not even a negative really, you know, one thing to bear in mind if you get one of these, 
is um, the availability of fuel because once the fan's going and, this, and the heat's going properly it does eat up twigs and, and sticks really really easily I mean where I am at the moment it's not an issue at all I can just lean behind me and pick up brilliant little pieces like this which is absolutely superb and is exactly what I need um, but if you're out in a spot where you're not particularly in sort of woodland like I am at the moment it can be a little bit tricky um, which is one of the biggest problems with, with trying to go wild camping in England is there's so few spots of woodland where you're actually allowed to camp like wild camp I mean unless you go and get owner's permission and stuff like that which is which is fine and is doable it's just a you know it's a bit of a, a pain so I really want to try and find somewhere that I can wild camp so if anybody knows of any spots in the uh, south of England other than other than Dartmoor because I know you can in certain parts of Dartmoor um, if you know you know please let me know in the comments uh, where, where I might be able to go um, you know if anybody can pass on <laughs> landowners uh, details to me that'd be amazing you know we can get in touch and um, I might be able to work something out but yeah I do like Dartmoor I have to say I do like Dartmoor I do like the moors it is a cool place to go and I'm actually I'm thinking about going in the next couple of weeks um, the only times I've been I keep going end up going back to the same place um, which is fine it's just not it's a little bit boring so if anybody who's watching this knows of a really nice bit of Dartmoor that you can go and wild camp on it doesn't have to be woodland because I'm fairly sure there are no woodlands particularly on in Dartmoor that you can legally wild camp in anyway um, but if anybody knows of a really nice kind of picturesque scenic spot with a really nice view um, you know just just let me know whether it's one of the tours or whatever if you could tell me uh, in the comments that would be absolutely brilliant so I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting out again I really want to go but I really want to go somewhere new um, I don't know if it'll be a solo wild camp I might go on my own or I might invite uh, a couple of buddies dependent upon what they're up to these days um, what with uh, Covid and stuff I know that a few of them actually now starting to go starting to go back to work be taken off furlough and things like that so um, I don't know if they'll be around but we shall see anyway so this is already boiling um, so I need to take this off uh, and get my coffee going and I can let the fire die down because it is warm out today I think it's supposed to be about supposed to get up to about 28 30 degrees at some point today so uh, so I definitely don't need the fire so I can just let that burn down um, and enjoy my coffee I forgot my spoon. So this is the other problem with England, isn't it? Wherever it's remotely nice, picturesque, there's always other people. <laughs> like where I've stopped in this little clearing here, it's not overly far away from the main path going through this woods. So there's people going past me constantly, which is fine, you know, you know, it's their right to enjoy the outdoors as well. It's just, you know, love to have a bit of my own woodland and no one else is allowed and it's just me and I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. Hey, -ho, one day, if I get millions of subscribers and earn, start earning a fair amount of money from making these videos, maybe it'll happen. Who knows? Might need to up my knowledge base and skill base before that happens, eh? Speaking of which, um, I've enrolled on another bushcraft course. So I don't know if I told you guys. I think I did. But I've, um, I've been doing Paul Kirtley's online bushcraft course. I also went and did a weekend with a company called Woodlands Woodland Way uh, Bushcraft, which is really good. And I've now um, signed up to another one, which will run over a weekend in November uh, in Wales, I think it is. I think it's North Wales. I think it's called Wild Way wild way bushcraft uh, it's run by a guy called jamie and it seems uh, really really cool um this one is again over a weekend so over two days um 
so they teach you a whole bunch of other a bunch of stuff uh, in and around sort of introduction to bushcraft but they also which is really cool they teach you how to uh, teach it to other people to pass it on to other people so you spend two days in Wales um, learning this stuff and then you have to go away and spend at least 16 hours kind of consolidating and practicing um, your skills before you're then brought back to uh, to a third day which is an assessment day um, and if you pass the assessment day you get a qualification um, in bushcraft which I think is absolutely brilliant um, and I'm really really looking forward to it I really hope that I don't muck it up too badly and that the assessment day um, goes well for me you know I, I mean I can't remember if I've told you guys but I do have a uh, history I've got I've got five years worth of experience of, of training and coaching others um, that's was what I was doing in my my last job role my last official job role um, before I took voluntary redundancy in, in January this year uh, which actually turned out to be quite well timed didn't it with all the COVID stuff that went on um, but yes, yeah, so I have a lot of experience teaching and coaching, so that bit doesn't bother me. It's more making sure I get the skills down uh, before the assessment day happens, particularly um, in kind of autumn, sort of early winter kind of time in this country. Particularly, you know, there's not a huge amount of places that I can go and practice that kind of stuff other than, um, other than my camp. Um, but even then, the resources there are not, you know, they're not endless. I may not have the right woods and stuff like that, so... But we'll see. But anyway, either way, I'm really excited about it, and I'm looking forward to looking forward to that weekend in November. Um, hopefully, that will make some of my videos a little bit more interesting, and we should be able to do some more kind of skills-based stuff. I know that some of the videos I've been doing, like the practicing ones, um, is more me failing than anything else, which can be quite disheartening. And I don't know how fun it is for you guys to watch. But anyway, hopefully, after this, we'll um, we'll actually know what we're doing a bit more and be able to go into slightly more remote places and things like that. I'm still hoping, you know, to go to, to Canada at some point and, and film a proper canoe trip over there and, and maybe even Sweden and the, the, the boreal forest once my skill base gets up. So it's just uh, it's a case of actually getting the skills now, isn't it? Yeah, as I say, it's part of the reason why if any of you guys know places that are really good to go, particularly in southern England. Um, where you know the the people that own the land are happy if they're if they're contacted and if they're they're warned you know ahead of time um, for people to go on and, and and do stuff in their woodland and that would be great. I'd really appreciate that. Path over there is starting to get busier. It's coming up to about midday now. People getting out for their lunchtime walks, and I've seen a few cyclists go by as well. I think I'm relatively well hidden. I don't think I've had too many people staring at me, going, "What's that guy doing over there in the weird hat and the camera?" Especially now I'm sat down. Although considering I am talking to myself, it might look a little bit odd. Anyway. So I'm just going to sit and relax for a little bit, enjoy my coffee, so I'm going to turn the camera off. Um, let the fire die down and I'll, uh, I'll make sure that that's extinguished properly. And then I'll uh, carry on exploring for a little bit. I don't, I'm not hugely confident that I'm going to find somewhere in here. Because the only bits that are kind of off the path are heavily overgrown, as far as I can see with ferns and things like that. But we'll keep, we'll keep looking, there's no, there's no reason to stop, so... We'll keep exploring. I'm going to stop yabbering now. I'm going to turn the camera off um, for a little bit and uh, I'll get back with you in uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. <laughs> See? People everywhere. Can't get away from them. All right, guys, so I've finished my coffee. I've just been uh, having some fun taking a few photographs and, and things like that. So uh, I think I'm ready to carry on exploring. So I'm going to keep walking for a little bit at least. There's a trail that wanders up that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my little smaller uh, handheld camera just because it's so much easier to carry around, particularly if it's going to get hot. Um, so I'll take you with me. I'll take you on the, on the little journey up to wherever the, the track leads. Um, and then we'll get out of here.
go in my bag, which I'm now going to have to wash, sanitize constantly. Blah. People, man. Okay, we're off. Just double checking that we haven't left anything. Leave no trace, just make sure that's, yep, yeah, that's all nice and cold. Cover that up again. Nice, so let's uh, carry on on this trail, shall we? See where we go. Should I mean about how close to the proper path we actually were. Beautiful day, I have to say. Look at that. Very nice view. Turns out that the trail ends um, at the top of the hill that I have actually been up before. I didn't realise I was in the same patch of woods, but um, yeah, I parked a different car park, made a different way in, uh, explored around a fair bit more. But yeah, cool, it's, it's all connected, which is, uh, which is really cool. So this is uh, this hill. So anyway, I'm going to carry on wandering back down towards the car park. And I'm going to go a different way to see if I can find anywhere that we might be able to camp. So, let's go. I think I'm nearly back at the car, just walking around, and look what I find! <sighs> More rubbish! People, man, I swear. Right, guys, so we are back in the car now, so this is where I'm going to love you and leave you. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, as I said before, I don't necessarily think there's many places that I could camp here. Um, I haven't given up hope, so I'm definitely going to come back and I'm going to park at a different car park and um, explore a different bit of the woods again at some point. But yeah, my next trip, I'm hoping, uh, I think I'm going to drive down to Dartmoor, so that's about four hours away from my house. So I'll drive down there uh, and try and find a nice spot to uh, to camp out on the moors if it's not too windy. So I'll need to check the weather before I go. But as I said before, yeah, if any of you guys know a really nice spot in Dartmoor, a really nice um, hill or anything like that, please do uh, please do let me know so that I can uh, I go somewhere cool that I haven't been before. Anyway, as I said before, thank you very, very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure, as always, you know, please um, subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff. And I shall see you very, very soon. Take care, guys.